What is up everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of November, heading into the month of December here in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, we're also going to be talking about the natural gas report, doing a breakdown, what numbers did we see there as well as my opinions on you guys and DGAS doing a technical breakdown and kind of what to look out for here over these next couple of weeks but before we do get into that all I ask from you is if you enjoy the video you find value in this video just simply go down below hit that like button and consider subscribing if you do want to see further content for me and if you want to be a part of the strive smart community the discord or group chats down below as well as the Facebook group so without further ado guys let's get into it and talk about the S&P 500 here and what it's doing today um, with about 23 minutes left here in the market. So if everything holds the way it is now, today is going to be yet again another red day, um, the second day in a row that has been a red day for the S&P 500. It's currently down $4.15 here, down about 0.15%. And it seems like these markets are finally slowing down um, after they've seen such a massive run up. They're not slowing down completely. It doesn't seem like they're breaking trend, but they're just simply slowing down after this huge run up that we've seen over these past, I guess you can say, um, 10 days without a, a, a significant pull down, right? We've seen a huge run up ever since here, 3029 really, pretty massive run up without any huge retracements at the end of the day. So here we see from 31 27 down to where we are right now it's really not too big of a pull down it's really just about a 0.75 percent but based on this trend that i'm seeing here especially on the five day five minute you know this still seems like we could potentially fall even further especially if we get rejected here officially um, by gapping down even further by this 180 sma because as of now we failed to break out of that which would have been a very big breakout um, towards the end of the day here for the S&P, which leads me to believe, and especially since we're trading below the 50 and the, the 50 SMA and the EMA, you know, that leads me to believe that this thing could continue down here um, again until we do break out of that. Let's say tomorrow the futures are gapping up like extraordinarily, right? At that point in time, we're going to be running up again. We're going to potentially see another all-time high. And, you know, the, the uptrend will be continuing. That's if that does end up happening. So those are a couple of things I'm watching out for here. Um, you know, on the S&P 500, if we sell off, maybe we touch that 50S or the rather the 180 SMA here on the hourly chart. That's definitely a possibility in my personal opinion. And judging on this four-hour chart, guys, if we get all the way down to 3080 which would be a sell-off of about another 20 points which really isn't too out of the ballpark here I would consider that being a very healthy um, entry point if you want to go long in these markets if you think that you know another all-time high is around the corner you could potentially trade you know SPY which tracks the S&P if you want to play that dip you can also trade maybe SPXL which is a leveraged ETF that tracks the S&P. These are some things you can trade if you want to play that dip on the S&P, right? So going to the Dow Jones right now, guys, it's down about 47 points, down 0.17%. Nothing really crazy today, but if we zoom in to the 20-day one chart or one-hour chart, you can see all-time high at around 28,100. And ever since that day, guys, which was on the 19th, um, we had one red day, followed by another red day, two red days in a row, and today it's going to be, um, if this holds, the third red day for the Dow Jones. So if we see a further retracement, this could probably go, I would say, to around 27500 bucks. That's the next level of support I'm seeing. That would probably put us on top of that 180 SMA as well on this hourly chart. So that's where I'd look to see if the Dow um, could find a support. That's what I'm looking at there. And if we go to the five-day, five-minute, 
which really reiterates my point as to, the, you know, the, there could be more downside here. We can see on the five day, five minute, just like the S&P, the Dow is struggling to break out. We actually got rejected by that 180 SMA here. Um, we're trending below the EMA as well as that 50 SMA. So this thing can definitely run down again, right? Even further, unless these futures gap up tomorrow. And let's say we're doing something like this, breaking out, you know, that could indicate a green day and, and potentially an all-time high on the Dow. So just keep an eye on this. This is still looking a bit bearish in my opinion. Um, it's just worth noting and worth keeping an eye on. So the NASDAQ right now, guys, down 21 points, down a quarter of a percent. And just like the Dow, the S&P, this thing is seeing a retracement, right? We've seen a massive run in these markets, guys, and they're finally slowing down a bit here. And like I've mentioned, this is completely healthy. This is completely normal. Do not freak out, right? But on the hourly chart, you can see, you know, 8379 is the peak here. Now we're trading at around 8270. We've seen a retracement of about 1.2%. And at the end of the day, guys, that's really nothing. We saw a huge sell-off last year of 20%. Imagine that, right? 20% last year, another sell-off last year of 10%. So a 1% correction at the end of the day, um, it's really nothing, which is why, you know, we saw on the five day, five minute for the Dow and the S&P, there could be some uh, a further downside here, maybe another half a percent um, before we do end up finding some sort of support. And you can see that on the five day, five minute on here as well. It's still downtrending. We're not really seeing a full on breakout on the NASDAQ quite yet. So I'm going to be watching tech stocks tomorrow morning. Um, futures, of course, if these are gapping up, this can completely go out the window in terms of uh, the potential theory that the markets could fall even further here because that would be a technical break to the upside, right? So keep an eye on which way we move in the morning. That's going to be extremely, extremely important here for the trajectory of the market over these next couple of days. So let's talk about what I did today, guys. Today was a fun day for me trading ACB, which is a MJ stock that I actually bought a couple of days ago, did quite well for me today. And I actually traded it in two accounts. Um, you guys saw I bought some ACB uh, two days ago at about $2.28 per share. I literally bought like 70 shares, a tiny, tiny position here. And those shares, believe it or not, guys, they're up like 30% right now. So I actually put another buy order in today at $2.80, a limit buy order in two different accounts. One of those was that same long-term account that I bought the shares in two days ago. So I have about like 400 bucks in that particular account. But the other buy-in was in my day trading slash swing trading account, where I ended up taking around a 4% gain on ACB on the swing. So right now, uh, or rather the day trade. So right now I'm owning about $400 in my long-term account account. And those shares, guys, this is like the quickest growing position that I've seen in a while in terms of my long-term account. Again, these shares are up like 20% right now in two days, which is crazy. And this is because we'll talk about it in a little bit here, but MJ stocks, they're seeing a lot, a lot of uh, optimism right now because of the federal ban. Uh, they're voting. I believe that they won the vote let me pull up the note right now since we're talking about it. Um, you know, historic vote to lift the federal ban on MJ. The bill passed on Wednesday by a 24 to 10. That was the uh, the favor there, 24 to 10. It includes provisions to expunge past criminal records and would introduce a 5% cannabis sales tax. So this is what's been running up these markets um, in terms of the cannabis markets over these past couple of days. And we can see they're extremely bullish. These stocks, you can see CGC. Um, you know, you can see all the other ones as well heading into the close today. So these are going to be ones that I'm watching tomorrow as well, right? So 280, I got in one account. I'm holding it. I ended up exiting in the day trade account for 4% profit. So that's pretty much all I did um, today in terms of day trading. I'm holding some other swings still, guys, like we talked about. Um, PayPal ended up selling out of Facebook. PayPal kind of bit me in the butt today. They acquired um, a $4 billion acquisition, I guess 
else. It was yesterday or something like that. And it seems like investors didn't like that because the stock ended up dumping. I'm not too sure if the stock dumped because of that, but it's a weird correlation because we can see, you know, over the past two days, ever since we've gotten this news, you know, the stock's kind of fallen, but I'm still holding on to PayPal and pretty much break even at this point. Um, again, I'm in Chipotle, McDonald's, and uh, what other ones am I in? Shopify, I'm still holding. I might cut that one tomorrow. We'll see how it goes, but that's what I'm doing right now in terms of my trading. So now let's talk about the natural gas report. We'll break down natural gas, a technical breakdown of it, you gas and D gas, and kind of my thoughts around the subject. So first, let's take a look at natural gas right now, and I'm watching slash NGF20. That is the ticker symbol, and these are the natural gas January futures. Make sure you're looking at the January futures right now, guys. So open these up. And this is what I'm looking at, right? If we zoom in a bit, actually, let's let's do that in a second here. But if we look on the four hour chart first, we can see, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, we're trading between 257 up to around 297. So we're in a 40 cent window right now that we've been trading in in terms of natural gas over these past couple of months, really since I guess you can say the middle of August, which was about three months ago at this point. So one thing I'm seeing here is this does kind of seem like a, a short term bottom, at least for natural gas. We, we hit 257. We held that quite nicely. This this was on the 19th, right? If we zoom in a bit, we can see that we tested 262 and ultimately held that as a support. Now we're starting to fill the gap up to the next resistance, which is at 266. Another thing that I'm liking here from a bullish standpoint and just briefly looking at these technicals is this double bottom breakout pattern that we're seeing right now. Again, we hit 257. We kind of consolidated at 260. We pulled down and re tested 257 and we held it now we're breaking out so that is a double bottom bullish breakout which whenever we see a double bottom you always have to think in the back of your head like okay is this going to end up breaking out and in this case it is breaking out. So tomorrow I'm watching to see the 266 level. And from a bullish perspective, you know, if you're if you have a bullish perspective, you want to see a break above 266 and ultimately a test at this 180 SMA and of course a break above that test. So, you know, um, you know, this is this is looking good, starting to reverse in terms of that perspective, right? Because we broke above those moving averages, but it's not quite there yet for a full Full on breakout that I want to see if I'm a bull here um, on natural gas, which honestly, guys, I still am remaining bullish here um, over these next one to two months. I definitely see more potential in natural gas. So now let's zoom in a bit to the one day, one minute so we can see the volatility right when the report was released. Then we'll look at the report. So at 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is when the report is released, right? You can see here natural gas shot up, sold off aggressively. That's where we tested that 257 level. Like I said, that's where we double bottomed. And from there, we broke out very viciously, hit a higher high. And now we're looking to close the market very, very bullish, right? So like I mentioned all the time in these videos, guys, natural gas, especially on Thursday when the report comes out, it's extremely volatile. It's up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, right? So let's look at Safari very quickly and talk about this weekly natural gas storage report. So like I mentioned yesterday, ir.eia.gov is where you can get this report or you can simply just go on Google, type in natural natural gas report, it's going to be one of the top links, if not the first link that comes up. So let's talk about the numbers here. We'll compare them to last week and look at some data from a year ago that was reported. Then we'll talk about some notes in my phone. So we can see here for the week that ended 1115, which remember these reports are actually a week 
behind. So in terms of these numbers in these different regions in the east, we actually had a 23 billion cubic feet withdrawal of natural gas. In the midwest, we had a 37 BCF withdrawal. In the mountain region, we had a 2 BCF withdrawal, while in the Pacific, we had a 2 BCF injection. In the south central region, we had a 33 BCF withdrawal. In salt, we had a 14 BCF withdrawal. And in non-salt, we had a 20 BCF withdrawal, totaling to net change from last week being a 94 BCF withdrawal. And the net change is really just this number um, subtracted by this number, right? Giving us that 94 BCF withdrawal. And this is the first withdrawal of the season. And, uh, you know, th this is a sign that the demand is starting to kick in and people are using this natural gas. We're getting into that season where we're starting to see withdrawals, right? So a year ago, we can see compared to what, uh, you know, we have now, we have a lot more production right now compared to a year ago, right? Right now we have 36, 38 in BCF in terms of natural gas storage compared to last year, uh, a year ago, 11, 15, 18, we had 31, 32 BCF. So we have about 500 BCF more natural gas in storage right now. So another thing worth mentioning is this withdrawal of 94 BCF actually came in on the high end and the high end meaning out of the 20 analysts that I was looking at yesterday and that we talked about in yesterday's video, you know, they projected a withdrawal from um, 65 BCF to about 100 and, uh, 102 BCF. So we came in on the higher side there at that 94 BCF level. So how is this going to affect natural gas and uh, you guys moving forward? Well, the truth is what affects this storage is the weather, guys. At the end of the day, the weather across the U.S., the east, the Midwest, the mountain, all of these different regions that, that we've mentioned, and really how cold it ends up getting because the colder it is over these next couple of weeks, next couple of months, that really correlates to how much natural gas we use. And the reason why, you know, natural gas ran up so much last year, if you guys remember, was because we A, didn't have much production, and B, we actually had a ridiculously cold winter, and there was a ton, a ton, a ton of demand of natural gas. And let me show you guys what I'm talking about if, if you're more new to trading natural gas, you gas and D gas, right? Last year, we ran up from two, 280 all the way up to $5. That's why we saw you gas go up so much in terms of a percentage and people keep asking me still like do you think you guys is going to a hundred bucks 200 bucks and the truth is that's pretty mathematically impossible unless we had natural gas run up to those same levels and even then I don't think you guys will be up to those levels and the truth is because guys like I mentioned in yesterday's video there is a ton of production of natural gas right now we have much more in storage than we have last year, as you guys can see, based on the hardcore numbers, the hardcore data, and the weather's not supposed to be as cold as it was last year. But then again, guys, you know, these weather forecasts, they're as wrong at the end of the day as these economists are. Economists have been projecting recessions over the past five years. Weather people, they, they always project things and they never come true, right? So at the end of the day, that's why we have to wait and see how cold does it actually get? Will natural gas end up picking the upwards move here in terms of the trajectory of the trend? That's another thing that I'm personally waiting for, right? So although these weather models, you know, over the past couple of days, and like we talked about in yesterday's video, they're not looking as cold as a lot of people would like, at the end of the day, you know, we're still early on in the season and a lot could change and a lot of unpredicted things could happen here. A huge cold front could come and wipe out the U.S. in the next month or two that we have no idea about at the end of the day. So what I'm watching for is, like I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, what you know, what direction is this going to pick? Are we going to run out and break above this 180 SMA combined with this, this cold weather that we could potentially get here over these next 
next couple of weeks. Are we going to get that formula to then run up natural gas's prices with the demand kicking in across the country? Or since we have a lot of production, let's say the flip side happens, you know, the weather doesn't get as cold as, you know, it did last year, which again, a lot of people are predicting. Let's say we don't see a cold weather, um, a cold winter across, you know, in terms of historic numbers here. Let's say we have a warmer winter, right? This thing could definitely start to run back down, especially if the demand for NG is weak in terms of natural gas. Let's say the demand is super weak and we start to really just sit on the supply we have. This price could definitely, definitely go down even further. Um, and that's kind of what I'm thinking right now at this point. I'm still sitting on the sidelines um, just watching this because I see a lot of potential as I know a lot of you guys do, but I just want to see what it does at this point. We're so battered down. Um, you know, this double bottom breakout could be something, especially again, if we break that 180 SMA, which is kind of what I'm hoping for right now for you guys. So that's kind of my thoughts the natural gas report breakdown, all of the numbers, and just some stats to just keep an eye out for, and just kind of my thoughts surrounding the subject. So let me know down below in the comments, what do you guys think about that? Now let's talk about some other stocks that I'm watching right now in the stock market other than natural gas, you gas, and degas, because I talk about those all the time. So Johnson & Johnson is another one that's kind of been flying under the radar here over these past couple of days, and it's been doing quite well, breaking resistance level after resistance level. So now we're trending in this range that we haven't been in since the middle of October, I guess you can say about a month ago at this point. So now we're trending between 135 and 140. So recently we broke 133, which was good. And again, we broke 135 just today or yesterday. And now I'd love to see if this thing finds support here at 135 since there's a dividend coming up? Is this the payment date? Actually, no, it's not the payment date because I own Johnson & Johnson uh, uh, in terms of my long-term portfolio. I know their payment date is in um, December. I think it's on the 10th of December, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that might affect it because typically when stocks do pay dividends, their share price does fall for that day a lot of the time. So that could affect it. But again, that's in about three weeks from now. So before that, we could probably make a move here, um, maybe up to 140, especially if people, if we start to see some volume here before the X dividend date, which th this, this could be why people are buying in right now, believe it or not, to get in on this dividend. But there is a theory out there, and a lot of people know this, maybe, actually many people don't know this, um, that theory is kind of a myth in terms of buying before a dividend, because that dividend essentially is lost from the price depreciation that the stock goes goes down after paying the dividend. So if you're looking to buy a stock just to get the dividend and hop out, you're likely not going to make money that way. Look into that. It's actually pretty interesting and it'll probably, you know, be a learning lesson for you guys because I know a lot of people don't know about that. So anyway, you know, if we profit on this in the short term here, um, you know, and, and and try to exit before that, that dividend payment to avoid the drop, I think we could potentially make you know, money up to 140 bucks, which could be a three, four percent profit, more two, three uh, percent profit on Johnson and Johnson. So another one that I'm watching is good old Tesla guys. They're actually unveiling their good old Cybertruck today. So I'm interested in seeing how that's going to fluctuate the stock. Do I have a position in Tesla? No, but it's always interesting to see how this stock moves, especially when they have an event that's that's going on. They're revealing something. It's interesting because if the investors out there, if the sentiment around it is positive, it could fly the stock up, fling that stock up. If it's negative, of course, the opposite could happen. So another one I'm watching, guys, is NEO. NEO, believe it or not, did quite well today, up 14 cents. And a lot of people ask me, Stas, do you do penny stocks, this and that? The truth is, I never day trade penny stocks anymore. Actually, that's false because I did it today. Very, very rarely do I day trade penny stocks. Do I hold penny stocks in my long-term accounts? 
I do. I own NEO, and then of course I own ACB, like I mentioned. Those are the only two stocks that I'm involved with right now that are penny stocks. But this is actually opening up a decent opportunity for a swing, especially because we're holding this $2 level of support here. This is worth watching because last time we broke this level, guys, we ran straight to 250. So from 2 to 250, it's going to be a massive margin of profit. Again, these penny stocks especially NEO, they fly quick. So this margin of profit's around 17%. So I'm watching this to see if it ends up breaking out. And if it does end up breaking out, it's going to look something like this. This is arguably, uh, you know, kind of like a bull flag here, in my opinion. You know, if we end up breaking out, you can see kind of the flag there. If we end up breaking out like this, I don't know why my cursor's not working, but you you guys know what I mean. If we do something like that tomorrow, that could trigger uh, a reason to buy, in my opinion, for NEO, and then we can end up grabbing that 17%. Sure, we probably won't grab that whole 17%, but maybe 5-10% out of it, I think it's doable, um, especially since NEO does have some positive news around it in terms of their deal with Mobileye, the, uh, the Intel Intel subsidiary. Look into that if you guys have not yet. So overall, that's pretty much it. PayPal, again, it's another one that we, we saw the deal with Honey Science, the stock dropped. So that's one worth watching. Um, that's pretty much it without holding you guys too long. Let me know what you guys think down below um, in terms of these stocks, natural gas, you guys, what do you think in the future? I'd love to know. If you guys enjoyed the video, let me know down below uh, by just simply hitting that like. Consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me and if you want to wear some Strive Smart merch like I'm wearing right here, if you want to buy a hoodie, sweatshirt, that is linked down below as well. Thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate every single one of you guys. As always, peace out.